And then, well, hey, you know what? That is that's relatable to an entrepreneur. You're always being hunted. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And our, our friend Brian Hess always talks about when he gets asked if entrepreneurship gets any easier, he says it's like outrunning a bear that, you know, the bear <laughs> doesn't stop chasing you. You just get conditioned to outrun it. What's up, everybody? It's Trey Tipton again. I'm here with my co-host, Kevin Gray. Mr. Kevin Gray, and today's guest, Daniel, can you tell everybody who you are and where you're from? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm Daniel Wright with uh, ProLine Parking Lot Maintenance. I've uh, been the president and CEO of the company since August of 2016. Uh, we are located just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, and we specialize in maintaining anything and everything, pavement and concrete. So that is what we do, where we do it, and who I am. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. So I'm going to start you off with a simple question, right? The simplest of simple questions. Now, whether or not you had somebody in the trades and or it was you who decided that I was like, I'm just going to do this because this is my thing. What inspired you to become a concrete asphalt contractor? Yeah, so when I got into the business back in August of 16, I was actually working as a a full-time fireman uh, for a small city outside of Charlotte. And at the time, I had a a uh, lawn care company doing residential lawn care and landscaping, worked as a full-time fireman as well as a part-time fireman in another department. Uh, my wife was in nursing school and anybody who's ever known anyone who goes through nursing school or gone through schooling like that themselves know that that's pretty much a full-time job in its own. So because uh, about a year or two before when her and I wanted to get married and her dad did not agree with it and told us that I needed to get a real job before we do that, I kindly disagreed with his answer and said, well, here's the deal. If if your daughter marries me, she'll never want or need for anything as, as long as we're, you know, as long as we're together. So when this opportunity presented itself, um, it was another fireman who started the the company. And it was a, it was a small job or a small company at the time, a part-time job for him. He had gotten promoted, didn't have time to run anymore, and asked me if I wanted to buy it. He came to me one day. He said, it looks like you like to work. You want another want another job? And so I talked with Kelsey about it, my wife, and we decided to go ahead and go for it. And, you know, went and took out a personal loan to buy the, buy the company, which came with one, one machine, one trailer and the name is, is what it came with. I mean, I had a good customer basis. We were, you know, people were calling the day I bought the business, but that's all it was. So to be honest with you, Trey, I had no idea that parking lot maintenance was a business. Uh, when he brought it to me, I said, what do you do? Go pick up trash in the parking lots? Like, what, what is this? And he said, well, kind of, um, you don't, you know, hopefully you don't have to, but that's, yeah, you can, but so yeah, when I got into it, man, to answer your question, I had no idea about what it was. I was just honestly trying to find a way to make more money to pay our bills. Uh, so I wouldn't be proven wrong by my wife's dad. So that was, that's how oh, I got man. it. Man. Yeah. Oh hey. man. Kevin, tell me how you relate to this, man. Cause right now I feel like I'm a little nervous. I'm not married yet <laughs> and I haven't gotten married yet. You know what I'm saying? So asking my woman's father for her hand in marriage is yeah. I I can assume it's very difficult. You know what I'm saying? I know your hands was probably sweaty because mine are getting sweaty as we speak. I don't even know how to feel about that situation, <laughs> but that that's an amazing thing, man. And you took a risk and I'm pretty sure that you're glad as well as everybody in TCS that you took that risk. So Kevin, okay, tell me what you think a little bit yeah, about do, it. Doing that alone, you know, by itself is not an easy, I mean, you got to work. <laughs> I remember when I did that, you know, about 15 years ago, like I had to work myself up for weeks <laughs> to have that <laughs> three minute conversation ends up, you know, at least break the ice breaking part of like asking the, the question uh, to the future father-in-law, but man, uh, that's so similar to my story. And I just, um, as far, as far as, man, it's just a testament to who you are. Like uh, you didn't know, anything about the industry but you believed in yourself and it was like you knew regardless of what it was what it looked like how much equipment you were acquiring how much knowledge of the industry you had what the odds stacked against you may be like you knew inside of yourself as daniel ryan like i'm i'm not going to fail i'm going to figure this out i'm going to make this work and by the way i'm not only going to make this work i'm going to i'm going to be a high achiever uh, no matter what I do. And it sounds like you've been wired that way for a long time, you know, being a full-time firefighter, part-time firefighter, 
running a landscaping, but like you just, you've got the drive inside of you. And like, that's so much of what entrepreneurship looks like. It's and everybody else thinks we're nuts. We're like, right. um, my my parents you know it 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 my my parents were so disgusted with me because i bought a broken down bankrupt paving business in in 2011 in the middle of the worst recession i've ever seen in my lifetime they're like in my you know i was you know my dad always had a pretty decent job growing up at least right. at least for the latter part of his career he's like i had a i had a great job i had a great career path lined out he's like what the hell are you doing it's like and i was like and I was like, dad, uh, and I was, to me, it was kind of like, I wanted to prove my dad wrong to some extent, because I knew, I knew I could figure it out. I knew I could make it. So testament to you, man. Like that's huge, taking bro. that leap of faith uh, is the scariest thing in the world. But when you believe in yourself, you know, everybody else thinks you're nuts and you're like, I got this. I, mean, I got this. Especially Daniel, because you were a firefighter. And then now I'm about to ask my girl to marry me. You were stuck in a rock and a hard place, my dog. I'd have been over there like, okay. Let me get my feet back on the ground for a second. <laughs> right, right. I will say though, in in, uh, in my father in law's defense, when I asked him to marry his daughter, um, I'd actually only ever met him in person once because we, we so we lived down in Charlotte and he's in Chicago, so I'd only ever met him in person once. Um, and at the time, I was working as a uh, at a marina, like pumping gas in boats. And so I, I was doing that. I was a part-time fireman and I was mowing grass when I, when I wanted to get married and, and Kelsey was working as a nanny and as a, a server at a restaurant. So it wasn't even that I had a full-time career position. Uh, when that came, when that position came about is when we were already engaged and the three minute conversation is not what took place. Um, I called him to ask <laughs> and he said, no. And I said, well, I respect your opinion on this but i've already kind of got a plan so that's that and then when uh i mean long story short you know when kelsey called to tell them that we got engaged she was not happy not supportive of it they didn't talk for a couple weeks and then finally i had to have a two-hour conversation with him and say look that's that's when the big thing came about of like look your daughter isn't going to ever want for anything like she will not need anything she will not want for anything i'll make sure that everything is taken care of and yeah. as I always say, every every risk we've taken in this business so far for the last six six to seven years, everyone we've taken, I talked to Kelsey about it. She's like, "Well, if you think it's the best idea, like I support it." I'm like, "Have we missed a meal yet? Like we maybe have eaten peanut butter and jelly for some meals. We've maybe eaten ramen noodles for some meals, but we haven't gone Come on home. now. Hey, you're not starving. Hey, hey, Daniel, so, don't don't hate on my ramen noodles. I grew up on them things. Man. All right. <laughs> You ask everybody who works with me. I come to work every day with a turkey sandwich and an orange for lunch every day. All right. I so knew I, I liked you, Daniel. On the simple meals. All right. Hey, I, I so, knew I liked you, Daniel. That's a true lunch pail guy, right? There, hey, a man. true That's lunch right. pail guy. That's right. Hey, I'll say this, Daniel. I want to give you a round of applause because you stepped in that role and handled business from the jump. Come on now, <laughs> Daniel. Um, next question, man. Next question. I'm a goofy guy, and everybody knows this about me, and it's okay. You know what I mean? I take that in with great pride to be goofy and as fun as I could possibly be. So this next question, because we started before, um, my man over here said He-Man was his go-to cartoon growing up. And we didn't end up getting into the other person's actual cartoon. But I got to know, Daniel, growing up, what cartoon is Daniel Wright watching? That's a great question. Um, I, I, I don't really... Uh... I don't really have a lot of cartoons that come to mind. I was never, I was never much of a cartoon kid. Um, when I was younger, I, I liked, I was like to be outside. So I would, you know, go outside and play in the neighborhood, whatever. Um, the first cartoon that came to mind to answer your question would be like Bugs Bunny. Um, hey. yeah, just having Classic. fun, but also knows how to get down to business and, and make things happen. So I'd be the first one that comes to mind, but yeah, I was never, I was never, never big into a lot of that. So I respect that. Man. I respect Bunny that. did make stuff happen, man. Like, oh, every he, time like, he always figured it out. He was as smooth as a fox, <laughs> even though he was a bunny. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was smooth. Yeah. He make you believe anything. He made me believe anything. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Next question. Next question. Yeah, that that brings it back, man. Just jogging the memory. That's good stuff. Bugs Bunny. Who was the uh? Who was Bugs Bunny right hand man? Was it Don? Not Donald Duck. Was it Donald Duck? Oh, jeez. Now or Daffy Duck. Was it Daffy? Well, that was that was his like yeah, well, uh, Donald, brush, yeah. Donald Duck was Especially kind of his, his nemesis, right? 
Yeah. 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 Like they're yeah, always El- Elmer Fudd was always up. chasing him. That's what it was. You know? Elmer. Elmer, good old Elmer. I got a couple uh, yeah, of friends that look like right. Elmer now. Weedy Bird right. was up in there. Well, hey, you know what? That is that's relatable to an entrepreneur. You're always being hunted. Right. Oh, yeah. And our, our friend Brian Hess always talks about when he gets asked if entrepreneurship gets any easier, he says it's like outrunning a bear that, you know, the bear <laughs> doesn't stop chasing you. You just get conditioned to outrun it. Right. So <laughs> kind of like Bugs Bunny and being hunted by Elmer Fudd. Like you always got somebody coming for you. You just got to make sure you're faster than they are. So, hey, man, yeah. that's very true. AD, that, that I just came you, full man. circle. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Actually, <laughs> I do appreciate that. Full circle Ooh. with everything. Throw them on. Mic drop. <laughs> I will say this, though, D. I want to know, because as we talked about this, we talk about it so often on the on this show, man, is how hard it is to be an entrepreneur. So what's been the most difficult challenge for you since you've not only joined TCS, but since you've become a business owner? I'd say, man, the most difficult challenge is like learning how to get out of your own way. As a as a business Ooh. owner, uh, I think a lot of people, especially in in the contracting world, you know, so a lot of people in TCS can relate to it. That when you start a business or you get into a business and you are the person who wears all the hats, does all the things, you take a lot of pride in that, right? Like you wouldn't do it and grow it if you didn't take pride in it. So learning how to you know get out of the way and bring on team members and outsource things and take other people's advice, direction, experience, whatever it may be, to help you and the company grow. That's probably been my hardest thing. Um, in fact, I mean, it's been what I've been working on most this year specifically is, is and I hate to say like delegating more things, it's just getting out of the way so that people on our team can actually do what they want to do. You know, when you have a good team, they want to do more. They want to take more ownership of things. And if I get in the way of it, uh, that's a good way to really crush morale, crush culture and crush our growth. So we've, I mean, we've had, I think it's, if if this year isn't our highest growth year um, to date, it's our second highest. And both of those, both of those growth years have come when I learned to rely more on a team versus all, all on me. So that's, that's yeah, the I like thing. that answer. I like that answer. That's a tough one. What you think, Kev? That's kind of a little bit. That makes a lot yeah. of sense, right? That Getting makes, out of our own way. Yeah, for sure. Because you know we we all and that's that c- c- can come with it if you uh, allow it to fester and grow. Like you think you th- you almost get to the point and and of the mentality that you've got to fix, manage, and control mm-hmm. everything. Um, because you 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 have been the one that's been there since day one, and you it. Like when it, you know, it was just you. How, how many people were there when you took over? You, you're looking at them. Yeah, that. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I at least had. I mean, I, I had a crew, but like uh, of five or six guys, and the, there might have been. You know, you put put all the pieces of all them together, we might have had two full full capable guys out of it. But <laughs> um, so that gets kind of hardwired from a very from right. a very you know young spot in the in the you know, in the journey of the entrepreneur, right. like, uh, because it is at, at some point when you first start, it is all on your shoulders. And mm. like that starts to kind of just get wired inside of you, I think, you know, um, and it's, it's hard to let go. And man, that was some, like my biggest struggle, uh, probably the, if I could go back and correct what, you know, in my career, uh, would be tapping more into my community and my mentors and, my brother, I mean, my TCS brothers, like, right. um, it, it, like I, when things weren't going well, whether professionally or, and probably even more so personally, like I would isolate right. because I don't want, you know, I've, I've built this company, this culture, this standard, this, right, right. you know, whatever that's kind of up on this pedestal to, to some degree. And it's like, I don't want, it's and it's hard it's hard getting over that pride and ego like i don't want these guys to know i'm not doing well right or the business isn't going great or i'm struggling personally it's like i you know and and it's and like in the times we need to reach out most for help uh and to those in our community like for me at least, i mean i'm just speaking for myself like that's the times when i would Go isolate back. the most as right. an entrepreneur we talk about how lonely it can be as an right. entrepreneur. like when i needed it the most is when I would withdraw. And like, that's if I can, you know, and, and I think 
call it a man thing, call it an entrepreneur thing, call it a, you know, we talked about he man, like carrying the weight on the carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders kind right. of thing. Like you don't want to admit when things aren't going great. Right. You know? Like, um, so for me, it was, it, it was that hands down. And that's something right there, man. It doesn't matter what field you're in, bro. It's hard not to, especially as the, as the man and or woman of the family, right? Like Absolutely. you take everything on your shoulders. I like yeah, to that's call That's not it. just a man thing, by the way. Yeah, that's, it's, that's it's a, man and, wo or, and or woman. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because to me, I, I was raised in a one parent household where my mom took over everything. You know what I'm saying? She played the role of father and uh, mother, right? So it was one of those things where things didn't only get tough, but she took on everything and stood on all 10 toes, right? So the next question I have for you guys, man, I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm trying to do something different, right? I want to do something that changes my family's life because I'd be the first ever entrepreneur, right? What's some advice you would give to a young guy like me? Don't listen to the people around you. Um, <laughs> I love that, Daniel. Yeah, so I'm so okay. So I've been fortunate to have grown up in a family that like my grandfather's an entrepreneur, uh, successful at that, sold their business, you know, they're retired now, things like that. My dad, um, he he always explored through entrepreneurship. And I mean, I got to see him experience successes and failures. So I'm I'm fortunate to come from a a good family that is open to opportunities and things like that. However, when I talk to a lot of people that I know that are in business ownership, they're the only people like they have no idea, like the rest of their family has no idea what they're going through. They have no idea what, you know, possibilities and capabilities are out there. So right. young entrepreneurs, people trying to start something on their own, they listen to everybody around them and it ends up suppressing them. It ends up like limiting their beliefs and things like that. Um, but if you don't listen to those people around you and you find the people that you you want to be around, you know, the people who you look up to that, you know, that you're inspired by and will encourage you and help teach you, find that network and get plugged into that. So the people who are immediately around you, 97% of them work for a company. Like they are employees, W2 employees of a company. So when you tell them that you want to go start your own business and be an entrepreneur and build your own path, people aren't going to understand it. They're going to say that, right. that sounds great. Like that's a great idea, but find yourself people who've done it. Find the 3% of the people who've done it and find yourself a network and get around them. And then you can listen to the people around you. Mm, I love that. Building a strong track. We talked about that earlier. Okay. What, what type of advice would you give to a young guy like myself? Man, um, find something you love to do. Mm. Like apps, like absolutely love to do. Um, and just and, and what I love to do and what my purpose and what I believe my calling uh, is on this, you know, the time I have on this earth is, is to serve other people is to help other people. Like right. that's what makes me feel good. Right. And so it didn't, it, it wasn't asphalt, you know, paving and pavement maintenance. I mean, now I I did grow to love doing that. Like mm -hmm. once everybody I talked to in this industry says, once, once you start doing it, it kind of gets in your blood. So yes, I did enjoy that very much, but like, it was the people. Um, mm. and that's, that's what made me happy. And that's what brought me purpose. So, uh, luckily, you know, uh, it wouldn't have mattered really. I could have been selling paper clips, right. like, you know, uh, if, if I had a team around me that I could, that I could go to war with every day and, you know, um, and, and believe in something together and seeing their lives transform, um, right. you know, in in this industry specifically for me, like it's I mean, you're dealing with a lot of people that might have a middle school education, like you know, on on some of the field side, and right. it's to to get them out of the trailer park and to see them buying homes and like going to we talked about it with Ryan Austin, you know, going to Disneyland and um just the stuff, just the things they never imagined possible. It's not um, possible. It's not like they can't even see that. Right. Like they the where they're from, how they were raised, uh, their roots, like they can't even. You could probably um, a lot of guys in the sports area, right. you know, they come from these very challenging backgrounds right. and like, they can't even fathom a different kind of lifestyle. Right. Um, and so many of them get trapped uh, and they just stay in that and they just stay there. Like, that's what we call in the hood call. That's what we call in the hood, the trap. Right. Right. So like, right. 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 You get, you get trapped into this ideology that you can't go further than where you already are. Right. 
where we're in this position where everything that's around us is keeping us down when reality yeah. is that the only thing yeah. that's keeping you down is that you don't have the knowledge of the opportunities that that's are in right. front of you. So yeah. I think me personally, I'm one of those guys, I think everybody in this entire planet has equal opportunity, at least in America, right? So you have 100%. equal opportunity, but does everybody have equal knowledge of the opportunities that are out there, right? And that's the right. thing that makes things difficult. So I challenge everybody who is out there to yeah. help, uh, help teach everything in between, right? Help yeah. them grow in that way. So the next question I have for you, Diaz, we have, we're closing in on time, is uh, when you're at this point now in your life, man, like, what has it meant to you to be a TCS member since you started? Yeah, so TCS, to be a part of this community, is a big part of what we do on a daily basis uh, here at our company. It's, you know, I tell folks all the time, you know, it's the organization, the value of the organization is not from one singular person, right? It's the network that we have of the like-minded individuals that are willing to learn, to share, contribute, so on and so forth, that provides so much of that value. I mean, I was just up in uh, in New York uh, this past weekend for a, for a conference, and I was able to get dinner with uh, uh, Nick and his wife, who's, you know, he's a member of TCS. And it's like, we were literally sitting there talking about, man, we would never be sitting here eating dinner together, sharing our lives with each other if it wasn't for this organization, if it wasn't for this group of people, right? So having that that network is is awesome. I think to the point that I'm at now, though, um, obviously, I mean, we've we've come a long way in our company since I started, you know, you know, six, seven years ago, right? And we've got a long, long, long ways to go. But at this point now, I've found myself in positions where I'm able to start giving back to other people, uh, to other business owners, to other contractors that are coming on board. And so we can start opening their eyes to the possibilities and the the potential that their business has to offer, that this community has to offer, and that, you know, the industry as a whole as being a contractor, you know, has to offer. So that's, that's probably where I'd say that uh, the, where I'm at with the TCS network and being part of this community of um, just really, really good humans. Uh, it's, it's something real special that uh, that is hard to find. And I think that a lot of people um, take it for granted when when mm -hmm. they have something right in front of them and don't ever take the time to enjoy it. Wow. That's such a strong statement. Now, Kev, you were put in a position where you had to leave for a second and you came back to the brotherhood slash sisterhood in every which way, right? Yes, sir. Tell Daniel what it means to you to be able to be back, to be able to be a brother back to Daniel again, to at least give him that love back, share that love with my man, Dan. Dude, I mean, to to me, that's that's what TCS is all about. And you just said it a minute ago, like well, there, there are some great business minds in this group there. I mean, there's no doubt that our systems and processes and everything we've learned on the business side of this has propelled our membership and in, in even the people that have kind of founded this thing forward, but it's the human, it's the humans. It's, there are good humans in this group. Um, and that, that can never change. Mm. Like, you know, when, when they, when I first got the phone call from Brian and he asked me to not only come back in, but to come back in as the executive director, man, like I, I, I'm getting emotional talk about it now. Like, um, this group saved my life. Like, and I wow. believe that, like, I believe that, like, um, you know, yes, I was starting to do some things um, independently that, that I need to do to, to keep myself healthy right. and safe. But like I needed, I needed to tap back into a purpose again. Come on. Um, and like this, for me, this is it. And this has always been it. Um, and even more so than my own company. Um because I knew I knew the magnitude that this platform uh, could serve other humans uh, on this planet uh, before my time's up. Um, and I think everybody that's a part of it, that this feels the exact same way. Like I really do. And like um, I had no, I had no idea what I was going to do, you know, four or five months ago. I mean, I, you know, I sold out of, of the business I had and kind of just started paving again. Cause that's, I was like, I got to pay the, I keep my house hopefully. Right. Um, and so I started paving again because that's all I knew how to do. And like, just never, you know, like that's true. That's brotherhood, sisterhood, like going through, like 
and and then and I won't be the first or the last like that goes through a hard you know period of their life that this group you know um, some quicker than others and that's cool that's part of the consequence of doing right. some dumb shit but like you know just the people wrapping their arms around you and saying we got your back no matter what mm. and you can't keep being a donkey right like, you can't be like at some point they're gonna say good luck to you sir right. you know or ma'am but like um just just and that's why this platform is different than anything else like the things we preach the things we talk about the things we say we stand for we actually do them come on um, we all do them uh, like and, and that's why we're so selective of who we let in here too like right. um it, this isn't about the money it's about serving 100 percent. i mean that's it man so uh daniel and and he was the first phone call i took when when this position got announced and i'm so glad it was because he told me how like like a brother Kept it real. i mean he told me like a fucking brother would tell it he said that's love these are my concerns these are my questions what's your plan what's your ideas how are we going to get this done yeah, how are we going to get it done and like i said that was the exact phone call i needed coming into this not somebody being like oh welcome back you know glad you're here right everything's cool no fuck that like i respect tell me that. how it is like I love that. And that, love and, that. I, and I'll never forget that conversation. And that'll keep me grounded as Going I go forward. forward. Yeah. So again, man, Daniel, we appreciate you. We're coming to the end of our time, man. We just want to say thank you so much for coming on Trade Talk. We love everything that you're doing over there at ProLine, man. We hope that you join us again soon. You got it. Appreciate it, guys.